In real time, the time in which we live, the universe has two possible destinies. It may continue to expand forever. Or it may re-collapse and come to an end at the Big Crunch. It would be rather like the Big Bang, but in reverse. I now believe that the universe will come to an end at the Big Crunch. I do, however, have certain advantages over many other prophets of doom. Whatever happens 10 billion years from now, I don't expect to be around to be proved wrong. Of all the pictures that I know, the simplest of any cosmology is that in which the universe is closed, has a finite lifetime, and collapses with the same kind of collapse that a black hole does. If it should turn out that indeed the universe is limited in its life, how is that different from the life of each one of us? On the evening of Tuesday, March 5th, at about 10.45, I was returning to my flat in Pinehurst. It was dark and raining. I came up to Grange Road and saw headlights approaching, but judged that they were far enough away that I could cross safely. The vehicle must have been traveling very fast, for when I got just past the middle of the road, my nurse screamed, Look out. I heard tires skidding, and my wheelchair was struck a tremendous blow in the back. I ended up in the road, with my legs over the remains of the wheelchair. The accident destroyed my wheelchair, and damaged my computer system with which I communicate. I required 13 stitches in my head, but I was able to go back to work several days later. The memories I have are very much kind of um, visual pictures of what Stephen was, of seeing Stephen in certain situations. He was always moving, always, well, hardly ever still. It was the same thing about his, his face and gesture, which he used a great deal, I should say, but it's only memory. I found some photographs recently, which reminded me of the general look of everybody. But I must say, Stephen looked very much like he does now if one thinks of him like that. He does believe very intensely in the almost infinite possibility of the human mind. You have to find out what you can't know before you know you can't, don't you? And so I don't think that thought should be restricted at all. And there's why shouldn't you go on thinking about the unthinkable? <laughs> Somebody's got to start sometime. I mean, think how many things were unthinkable a century ago. And yet people have thought them. And often they also seem quite unpractical. Uh, so some, not all the things Stephen says probably are to be taken as gospel truth. He's a searcher. He's looking for things. And if he is, sometimes he probably talks nonsense. Well, don't we all? But the point is that people must think. People must go on thinking. They must try to extend the boundaries of knowledge and they don't sometimes even know where to start. You don't know where the boundaries are, do you? You don't know what, what your taking off point is. If we do discover a complete theory of the universe, 
It should in time be understandable in broad principle by everyone. Not just a few scientists. Then we shall all, philosophers, scientists, and just ordinary people, be able to take part in the discussion of why it is that we and the universe exist. If we find the answer to that, it would be the ultimate triumph of human reason. For then we would know the mind of God. <laughs>